Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of biology, what is in the world of the body, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you, we welcome your phone calls. On the bright side, our number is 844-236-6010. We do have lines open for you, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about, read about, something you may have been told about health care or skin care, 844-236-6010 is our number. Of course, if you have a success story or if you'd just like to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head to my website, brightsideben.com, also criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. You can order your longevity products right off the website. You're beyond tangy tangerine, ultimate nightly essence, ultimate enzymes. All the fine longevity products are up at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. If you're an entrepreneur or if you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, If you're a business person and you want to make some money and you want to also help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, you want to look into the longevity business. All the details are up at brightsideben.com as well as pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for more information. For a one-time $25 fee, you can be in business, enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business. Earn thank you checks, work out of your home, enjoy the tax benefits associated with having your own business. Call 866-735-2470 for more information, 866-735-2470, or head to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. Also would like to remind you to please check out our Truth Skin Health products if you're interested in high-end, highly active, potent skin health products. If you're not satisfied with your skincare products now, or if you want a little boost to your skincare regimen, if you're dealing with dark spots or aging skin, dry skin, or if you want to prevent those from occurring, look at our Truth Treatment treatment products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com. Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Transdermal Sea Balm, Truth Transdermal Sea Serum, and of course our Retinol 5% Gel, all made with generous amounts of vitamin C, premium fat-soluble vitamin C, as well as retinol. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactant, silicon, oil, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want ever in any of our Truth Skin Health products. They're up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back, friends, to The Bright Side. We've been talking about the heart and its nature as a vibrational system. This vibration manifests, as we said, as electrical phenomena. The heart is the most electrical system in the body, the most electrical organ in the body. It's way more electrical than than the second most electrical organ, which is the brain. And this is really the fundamental idea that we have to understand if we're going to be able to prevent and reverse heart disease. The heart is an electrical generator. It's an electrical system. And this brain-dead notion that it's about cholesterol or it's about saturated fat or we somehow need to be statinized back to health is just absolutely ludicrous. It doesn't work, and it it, it just demonstrates the absolute boneheaded impotence of the medical model when it comes to dealing 
with heart disease or any other health challenge for that matter. The heart and the body are primarily electrical systems. They're only secondarily chemical. Our organs are electrical. Our skin generates an electrical current. Skin diseases can be associated with changes in the flow of electrical energy through the skin. The melanin in our skin is electrical. The electrical current in our skin can be measured to tell if we're lying or if we're happy or if we're sad. Our cells generate an electrical charge. And diseases, especially cancer, are associated with defects in cellular electronics. Even our fluids generate electricity. Tears and saliva and digestive juices all contain a substance called lysozyme, which is piezoelectric. That means it generates an electrical charge when it's subjected to, pr uh, to pressure. In the future, these electrical charges can and will be used to fuel all manner of wearable technologies, wearable devices, and ultimately implantable devices, implantable energy harvesters, implantable biomedical devices, and digital information processors that will give people and doctors, as well as, unfortunately, governments, access to our biological information from the inside out. And whether or not you and I find this disturbing, and I do find it disturbing, it really doesn't matter because this is what's on the way. So for better or worse, human beings, and for that matter, all living beings, from the tiniest little protozoa, bacteria, to the largest mammals and primates are fundamentally and primarily electrical. That is, the, the, everything that's alive, from bacteria to protozoa to amoeba to cells to mammals to primates, everything is fundamentally and primarily electrical, yet for financial and economic reasons, we have a health system that is focused on the chemistry, on the pharmacology, as well as surgical manipulations when it comes to health. And of course, it's certainly lucrative to exploit chemistry, to exploit pharmacology. I, uh, at, that is, it's lucrative for a small group of misguided professionals and drug companies. Unfortunately, this, this attention, this focus on chemistry can never, ever, ever do anything to improve the health of the body. That's because the only chemicals that the body wants are food chemicals and oxygen. The only chemicals that are supposed to be in the body are the chemicals that are found in foods. I should say the chemicals that are found in natural foods, in real foods. Today we've got all manner of foods that have fake chemicals in them, but natural food chemicals are the only chemicals that cells use. That is the mighty 90 essential nutrients, glucose, and proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Those are the only chemicals and phytonutrients to a certain extent. Other than that, everything we put into our body has to be cleared out and processed as a poison, and of course that includes drugs. Only, uh, only a doctor could possibly think that we could be healthier by taking a poison, by taking a drug. You put a drug in your body and immediately the body goes into emergency mode to get rid of that drug. That's why we get diarrhea and cramping and bloating after we take prescription drugs. This is the most common toxicity or adverse reaction associated with prescription drugs is, is GI or gastrointestinal distress. Why, you ask, is there gastrointestinal distress? Why is GI distress the most common adverse reaction associated with drugs? Because what we call GI distress is really the body's protective mechanism. It's really the body trying to get rid of that toxin. When you take a prescription drug, the entire system goes in, the entire biological system mobilizes to eliminate that substance. Drug companies have to raise the dose. They have to account for that instant elimination or rapid elimination of the drug by, by making the doses higher. There's nothing, nothing, nothing in the pharmacomedical model of disease that can make us better, period. And that doesn't just include drugs. It also includes surgical procedures and devices. This is why we have markers and test scores and why these metrics are foisted upon us as indicators of good health. It doesn't matter how healthy you are. It matters what your cholesterol score is. It doesn't matter how much energy you have. It matters what your thyroid score is. It doesn't matter how strong you are. It matters what your bone mineral density test is. Why do you think they have all of these tests? Because that's the only thing that they can control. They can't make us healthier, but they can lower your cholesterol score, or they can lower your bone mineral de or raise your bone mineral density, or lower your, lower your blood sugar. So while the chemical model of medicine, that is drugs, is certainly economical, uh, economically rewarding for some people, from a wellness perspective, there's nothing, nothing, nothing they could do to make us better. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. Okay, 
we are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben, and thank you for joining us today. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com if you miss a program or if you want to review a program. They're all up six years plus worth of worth of. Uh, Programs, bright side programs, and lots of great health information, always free. Also, have a bunch of YouTube videos. If you Google Pharmacist Ben, uh, if you do a YouTube search for Pharmacist Ben, you'll get uh, probably several hundred YouTube videos that we've done over the years. It's all free, and it's all good information. It's all unique information. And, of course, if you want to check out the bright side every day, we're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. If you want to check out the Longevity products, please head to criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website. You can also purchase all your young, all your Longevity products off the websites as well, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, and brightsideben.com. So we're talking about the uh, distinction between electrical medicine and chemical medicine, the chemical model of medicine, that is drugs, is definitely financially rewarding for some folks, for drug companies, that's for sure, for uh, hospitals and, and drug stores, pharmacies, although pharmacies probably make the least in the, in the chain of, uh, 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 of delivery of drugs. Ph- probably pharmacists and pharmacies make less money than anybody else. Nonetheless, the reason why we have drug therapy is not because we get better from drugs. Make no mistake about it. There's absolutely nothing the body, uh, nothing a, a prescription drug can do to make the body better. These uh, uh, drugs, as well as devices and surgical procedures, are not only ignorant, they're not only barbaric, but they're useless at stemming the tide of heart disease or any other chronic health crisis, that, any uh, other of the chronic, chronic health crises that we confront. When it comes to the health of the body, the electrical nature is primal, and this is specifically true about the heart. And this is something that has been marginalized and dismissed over the last 150 years, despite the fact that brilliant scientists like Royal Rife and Robert Becker have shown us empirically and scientifically that working with electromagnetics should be the fundamental aspect, the fundamental approach that we take when it, t- when it comes to getting better. Even life itself can be generated via an electrical charge. Not, it's not just about health, it's about life itself. This is called the Frankenstein effect, and very few people have heard of this, and this is very unfortunate. In 1837, a scientist named Andrew Cross, C-R-O-S-S-E, published literature and announced to the London Electrical Society that he had proven spontaneous generation of life in response to an electrical charge. He ran an electrical current through silica, basically sand, and amazingly, little bugs started to come out. And mind you, this is just plain sand, inorganic sand, nothing living in it. He ran an electrical charge to this stuff, and little bugs, little mites called, called uh, uh, acurus, acurus insects, A-C-U-R-U-S, acurus insects, or acuri insects, which are basically little mites. They spontaneously generated out of the electrical charge that was run through these, through these uh, silica crystals. Cross literally ran an electrical current through non-living, inorganic sand, basically, and bugs were generated. This is a miracle. How did this happen? And these results were shown not once or twice, but repeatedly, and the bugs manifested from this inanimate material via generation uh, of electrical charges through numerous conditions. He ran these experiments in a variety of conditions and consistently he generated these bugs out of sand. And lest anyone think that these findings were somehow fraudulent or, or the results of some kind of crackpot science, the great Michael Faraday, who's considered one of the most brilliant scientists of all time and uh, uh, one of the founders of electromagnetic theory, he also reported that he had replicated this experiment. Unfortunately, this work was done in the, in the 19th century, the, the early and middle part of the 19th century, and the average person was not really ready for this kind of science, and Cross's work and results were relegated to the realm of the demonic. He was dismissed as blasphemous and as a, a charlatan who was attempting to take over God's role as creator-in-chief, and ultimately this research was lost to history, and all reporting of this absolutely stunning 
and really, I consider it to be miraculous phenomena, stopped. Nobody talked about it anymore, and there's no more research done on it, and today hardly anyone knows about it. I, 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 would, I would bet that very few folks listening to this program right now have ever heard of Andrew Cross or, or uh, uh, the Frankenstein effect, as it's called. You can, if you're interested, just Google it. You can Google abiogenesis. That's what this phenomenon is known as, abiogenesis, the genesis of life with, uh, without life, the genesis of life from inanimate or non-living sources. It's called abiogenesis. You can Google it. Google abiogenesis and Andrew Cross, or Google the Frankenstein effect, or Google Akari insects and Andrew Cross. The Akari insects were the name of these, mu these bugs, these mites that were generated out of an electrical current. And this has all been shown in the literature, although not recently, of course, because nobody talks about it anymore. And, uh, you know, to me, I don't know why we're not doing more research on stuff like this, but we're not. From a more practical standpoint, all the heart health strategies that we've talked about for the last few, last few weeks have their basis in electricity. When it comes to heart failure, strokes, aneurysms, heart attacks, angina, the movement of blood itself is a function of electromagnetic phenomena that, that's known by scientists as the zeta potential. The movement of blood depends on electricity. Clotting blood is an epidemic, and clotting blood is an electromagnetic phenomena, as is flowing blood. As blood flows, as liquid moves, it generates an electrical charge. Pretty much all cardiovascular health issues involve, or, or I should say, pretty much all cardiovascular health involves stabilizing electrical energy, improving the flow of electronic energy, facilitating the ease with which electrical energy can flow through the circulatory system. So continue along with our discussion on heart disease and the non-medical ways that you can keep your heart healthy or that you can reverse heart disease. And yes, heart disease, like all degenerative diseases, is reversible, not curable, but reversible. I don't ever use the word cure. Doctors hate for people to say cure. They, there's no cures. Cures are magical. Reversal is scientific. Cures are magical. So for reversal of any disease, particularly heart disease, there's lots of strategies you can use. Now, we've gone over non-medical strategies, uh, including calorie restriction and diet, uh, re reducing sugar in the diet, dietary strategies mostly. It's important to recognize, I think, that these non-medical strategies that we've talked about and that we're going to continue to talk about are not only important for heart health, but you can think of them as overall health strategies, anti-aging strategies, longevity strategies, feeling good strategies. These are all things that we can and should do to reverse any health challenge we, we may be dealing with or to prevent any health challenge. No surprise, the vast majority of these involve food. Food, food, food should, should come as no surprise because the vast majority, in fact, probably darn near close to 100% of the food that we eat today didn't exist a mere 150 years ago. Even if we're eating vegetables, for the most part because of genetic technologies and genetic modification, I'm not talking GMOs, but just breeding techniques, the foods, were, uh, the foods including the vegetables we're eating today didn't exist 150 years ago. So our, the human body is trying to make do with a brand new menu, a menu that it did not grow up with. So it should be no surprise that we would have these kinds of uh, this kind of incredibly dramatic and tragic health ep health crisis where one out of three Americans is dealing with some kind of health challenge. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben A four four two three six sixty ten is our number. You're listening to the bright side. We're coming back with you and your phone calls and more good health information right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we're back. On the bright side. Thanks for joining us. I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about heart disease or bioelectronics, if you want to comment about Andrew Cross and his spontaneous generation studies, the Frankenstein effect. If you have a question about our true skin health products or ingredients or formulations, 844-236-6010 is our number. And we will get your calls here in just a quick sec. So hang tight if you're on hold. We do have lines open for you, by the way. Uh, a couple studies I want to read real quickly. This is from the journal Neurology, published last week, October 4th. One type of dementia is especially costly, a type of early onset dementia known as frontotemporal degeneration, 
appears to take an even more punishing toll on family finances than Alzheimer's disease. A new report suggests this uh, FTD, as it's called, frontotemporal degeneration, is, the, is actually the most common form of dementia to uh, strike men and women who are under the age of 60, and it can cost you $120,000 a year. Here's the key. It's a degenerative disease. It's a degenerative uh, uh, end result. I don't even like the word disease. It's a degenerative end result. It's the result of degeneration, as all diseases are. It doesn't matter whether you call it frontal temporal degeneration or Alzheimer's disease or any other kind of dementia. If you're dealing with any kind of brain health issues, cognitive impairment, memory loss, any of the signs of dementia, please understand it's nothing more than arthritis of the brain. There's nothing a neurologist can do for you. There's no drugs that you can take, but you can take care of it yourself by reversing the, by starting the reversal process, and it begins with food. Eliminating problem food, using your nightly essence probiotics, eating fermented food, don't underestimate the importance of the gut-brain axis, stabilizing blood sugar, all degenerative issues need to be regarded as at least partially the result of dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar, stabilizing your blood sugar by eating more protein, not, not overdoing the protein because protein itself can throw off your blood sugar, but eating more protein and less, uh, less refined sugars and carbohydrates, using vegetable juices, more fiber, using your sweeties and magnesium, your osteomag, as well as your ultimate niacin and ultimate selenium, all of which are extremely important for helping the body process sugar. Treat your, blo your uh, uh, mental health issues, whether they're degenerative in nature, as Alzheimer's disease is, or dementia, uh, dementias in general are, or Parkinson's disease, or frontotemporal dementia, or even if it's things like depression or anxiety, or mental health issues that are not organic and not related necessarily to the structure of the brain, using blood sugar control strategies and using your digestive health strategies are incredibly important. Go ketogenic. I cannot possibly stress how important the ketogenic diet is, the generation of ketones is for mental health issues, all mental health issues, including organic ones like dementia, including structural ones, I should say, like dementia. The ketogenic diet is an ideal way to eat. Generation of ketones, uh, allowing the body to utilize ketones for energy is a powerful, powerful, powerful longevity, anti-aging, as well as anti-disease strategy. All right, uh, let's see. Got a full board now here, so I will, uh, let's hit the phones now. Got a few more stories I wanted to talk about, but we can get to those tomorrow. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Deanne in Texas, who's been holding on for a long time. Good morning, Deanne. Welcome to The Bright Side. Hi, Dan. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's going on? I am on a day seven of a water fast. Nice. And I'm just wondering um, if I'm taking the right supplements to just not get myself in trouble down the road. Well, first, before we get into that, tell me how you're doing your fast and tell me how you knew about a water fast, first of all. So you're, just, you're basically just not eating and drinking water. Is that right? Well, I'm not. I'm no food. I okay. take a full uh, protocol of supplements. I feel amazing. That's awesome. I, uh, the, the second day was incredibly rough. It was it was a nightmare. I hope I forget one day, but I probably won't. How did you uh, How did you How did you muscle through? How did you get through that day? Tell Tell our listeners because a lot of folks run into that where they just can't get through. How did you muscle through it? Well, the first day the first day I would say was just grit because it was just. There's, there's a lot of habits I have and and um, just behaviors I have just forced myself to not think about what I normally do. Um, by the second day, a, a headache started coming on, but I was already feeling a little bit better by day two, except for at about 4 p.m. on day two, I started to get a little bit of a headache. By 10 o'clock that night, it was a raging 10 out of 10, full-on mig migraine with a sick stomach and feeling like I was going to vomit, and I thought I was literally not going to get through that night. And I was really sitting up the whole night thinking to myself, am I doing the wrong thing? I wish I had someone could tell me if this is safe. So how did you and get through it, though? I, Most people would have eaten by then. How, did, how come you, you know, didn't? You know what? I, I got up and I, I did lots of things. I, I, um, I, got, I tried to drink this water. Then I made myself this, uh, this hydration formula that's based on the World Health Organization's um, salt and water, and they put sugar in it, but I just left the sugar out. And instead, I just put apple cider vinegar in it, 
Okay. And so I started just drinking that, and then I took a potassium supplement. It's 99 milligrams, and I took one of those, and I'm going to take in two of those before the end of the night. And it got and, you through? Um, pardon? It got you through? It got you over the hump? I just... I really, it was really just muscling through because it was, it was horrible, but, but I'm not really a stranger to migraines and I usually do just sit through them. And then, but so the third day you're, I'm, I got a bunch of calls I want to get to, so I don't mean to rush you, but I want to get to the point yeah. here. Did you, so the third day you start to feel better, I assume. Yeah, the third day I feel better and each day I've gotten progressively better. And I want to say also that I have been doing a little bit of walking every day through the whole thing, starting at just a, a half mile, which was horrible for me and I'm up to just being walking a mile and I can do it and I still I feel great I that's really awesome do. that's awesome I think I the potassium sure taking care yeah, of myself I was gonna say I think the problem with the water fast and I'm a big believer in the water fast who told you about that did you hear from this program yeah oh yeah I've been hearing from you for a long time but I just haven't really gotten the you know I okay. just had to turn that switch well, the potassium really helped you, and I'll tell you why. Because when you do a water fast, which I, I'm a big believer in, you lose electrolytes and you lose B vitamins. And those can make you feel really crappy. And that's why it's important when you're doing a water fast, or, or any time you're drinking a lot of water for that matter, that you replace your electrolytes, your B vitamins, and your vitamin C. And that's why I always like people to be drinking the Beyond Tangy Tangerine while they're, fat, while they're doing a water fast, especially if it's long term. Now, you got away with the potassium, but you still may be missing some key electrolytes. So if you can get a hold of some BTT, Beyond Tangy Tangerine, try and sip on it periodically during the day. It will help you get through everything. And uh, I think you're doing great. And you don't need me to tell you that because the best barometer of how you're doing is how you feel, and it sounds like you're feeling really well. Your migraines, I imagine, you haven't had any issues with that after the second or third day, right? No, I'm completely, completely That's awesome. headache free. That's awesome. You know, when you start eating again, and eventually you'll probably start eating again, just keep in mind the power of this fasting strategy and then incorporate intermittent fasting into your life for the, for the rest of your life. Incorporate every month or so or a couple months or three months. Just do a day or two of fasting. Maybe every six months do a seven-day fast. Just use fasting. Leverage the power of fasting for overall health. It'll keep you out of the doctor's office. It'll keep you, away, it'll keep you off of drugs, and it will absolutely positively improve your uh, quality of life as well as your longevity. Thanks so much for your call, Deanne. Appreciate it. I'm going to let you go. I got a bunch of calls Thank I want you. to get to, but thanks for sharing that. I appreciate it. All right, let's go to, uh, to, 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 let's go to John in Reno, Nevada. Good morning, John. Welcome to the bright side. John, Good I hate morning. to do it to you. We music. got, Yeah, we got the music. I'm sorry. Uh, hang on, though, okay? We'll get you first up when we come back. If you're on hold, we'll get you as well. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We will return right after this. Don't go away. talking to John. Uh, by the way, our number is 844-236-6010, and we are talking to John in Reno, Nevada. Good morning, John. Hey, I John. saw you on uh, The Truth About Cancer. Oh, nice. Is this underwear guy? Yeah. Was hey, that buddy. What's that? Was that live? <laughs> yeah. I, I was there this weekend. I was in... Uh, I was in uh, Orlando at the Truth About Cancer. I know we got some listeners from, from the event. That was an amazing event, by the way. Ty Bollinger's, aside from being an awesome human being, he does a great job over there, uh, the Truth About Cancer. And I'm, we're also going to, I'm trying to get an affiliate set up so you can, uh, you can uh, sign up to, to uh, view the videos. And there's, I, I learned so much stuff myself uh, at this event. Uh, Dr. Mercola was there and uh, a bunch of other folks, uh, a bunch of uh, other well-known cancer specialists and, and medical researchers were there. And I got to be there also. Uh, and I did my usual, my usual spiel about the, how easy it is to be healthy. And I got to talk to people who hadn't heard, heard about my work before. So it was a lot of fun. Did you watch it on video or did, uh, how did you see I it? I did. And you got, you got a nice ovation at the end. You did a nice thing on skin. Uh, you're the skin guy. You know, That's everybody no focuses in. When you say skin, they all just, they're just focused yeah. like laser sharp. I know. Right. People would rather have their skin beautiful and their insides falling apart than the other way around, it seems like. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So, so what's anyway, going on? How can I help I, you today? I saw, I saw a guy on that thing who was talking about uh, water fasting. He was a oh, doctor. Oh, yeah. Dr. Group. In my law. Dr. Yes. Gr 
Yeah. And so I was going to ask you something about it, but your previous caller kind of went through the fasting thing, and so I'll just hold back. But I did want to ask you about if you would explain to me about net carbs. Uh, yeah, the net carbs are. Have you see, been seeing those on uh, on uh, product labels? Well, about two years ago, I was looking through all the diets, and I looked at Atkins, and they were talking about net carbs, you know, dietary fiber minus uh, your total carbs minus dietary fiber and uh, sugar alcohols. And I didn't get the whole sugar alcohol thing. Sugar alcohols are... or sugar alcohols are a special type of sugar uh, that is not metabolized like glucose, and so they're safe for diabetics. Problem with, and they go by the name sorbitol. When they when a sugar has an O L at the end of it, like sorbitol or mannitol O L at the end, that's a sugar alcohol. Sorbitol is the most commonly used one, uh, and they're not processed like sugar. These sugar alcohols, so uh, they subtract them out from total carbohydrates in order to get the net carbs. Net carbs is the total carbohydrates minus the fiber and minus the sugar alcohols. Does that make sense? So your total carbohydrates will be like 27 grams, but then you got to subtract out the fiber because that's not processed like regular sugar, and then you got to process the, or, or subtract out the sugar alcohol because that's not processed like regular sugar, and your total then is net carbs. So you may have 27 total carbohydrates, but you may only have 10 net carbs. Does that make sense? You subtract out the fiber, which doesn't affect your blood sugar, and you subtract out your sugar alcohol, which doesn't affect your blood sugar. So net carbs, a lot of folks feel, is a more accurate reflection of how, uh, how uh, uh, of the effect a carbohydrate-laden product, like a processed food, will have uh, on, your, on your blood sugar. I hope I explained that well. Total carbohydrates oh, yeah. m- minus dietary fiber minus sugar alcohol equals your net carbohydrates or net carbs. So the idea being that you don't want to really factor in your sugar alcohols or your dietary fiber. I will say that uh, sugar alcohols can be a problem for the digestive system, for the intestine. People will bloat or have digestive discomfort after they ingest sorbitol, particularly, is well known for causing digestive distress. So it's not necessarily a kind and benign sugar, although it's not going to affect your sugar alcohol. Net carbs is the carbohydrates that will actually, I'm I'm sorry, won't affect your blood sugar. So net carbs is the... uh, is the total carbohydrates that will actually affect your blood sugar. Total carbohydrates won't, uh, contains the fiber and and sugar alcohols, which won't necessarily affect your blood sugar. So net carbs is a much more accurate reflection of dysglycemic potential, of of how how much a a food can destabilize your blood sugar. Okay? Hope that helps. Yeah, you know, yeah, it does really help a lot. They market a lot of little foods, like their candies, like little candy bars. They're not good for you. That's what I. That's what I wanted to hear because you don't want processed food. You don't want to be living on processed foods. Processed foods are emergency foods. If you absolutely positively have to get some calories in your system uh, or some energy, if you're really, really famished, uh, then you you know go with a processed food if you have to, although a banana is probably a lot better for you or an apple or you know uh, some kind of whole food. You know, the sugar in whole foods, the sugar in fruits, I should say, it's still sugar, but it's linked up with other substances, particularly things like flavonoids and carotenes, what we call phytonutrients, what we've been discussing, what we've discussed a lot in the past. And these flavonoids and, uh, flavonoids and carotenes are solar activated. They're, they're energized by the sun. And the solar activation links up with the fruit sugar, with the fructose, to sort of mitigate some of the damaging effects of the fruit sugar. So if you're, gonna, if you, if you're in need of sugar for, for quick energy, it's way better to munch on an apple or a half an apple, I should say, or half a banana. You don't need the whole apple or whole banana for the sugar than it is to get a processed food. If you're in an emergency situation, uh, you know, use a processed food, uh, one of those Atkins bars or, or candy bars. But really, they're best stay, it's best to avoid those as much as possible in my humble opinion. John, I'm going to let you go here, bro. I want to get to some more calls. Thanks so much. I appreciate it, and thanks for the kind words. appreciate that as well. Let's go to Diane in Nebraska. Good morning, Diane. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, Ben. Hello. My two-year-old uh, grandson had his appendix removed uh, a couple years ago. I'm, okay. I'm sorry, he's not two years old. He's nine years old. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, and now uh, they're having him evaluated uh, for... ADHD. Okay. So well, they, they, abso- oh, absolutely. I'm, I don't know definitively that there's a connection because people with, with their appendix still have ADHD, but there could most certainly be a connection. 
the appendix, they used to tell you, when I was growing up, and probably when you were growing up too, Diane, they used to say, oh, the appendix is just a vestigial organ. It doesn't have any use. It's just it's some kind of evolutionary, evolutionary vestige. It's just there from a long time ago, and today we don't even know what it, we don't think it does anything. Do you remember when they used to say that? Yes, I do. And so they thought nothing of taking the appendix out. However, today we know that the appendix is a, a little warehouse of good bacteria. It's where probiotics live, extra probiotics live. It's like a warehouse. This is why appendicitis is such a problem, because when the appendix bursts, all these bacteria can get all over, uh, uh, can, can saturate the blood, and you can run into some serious problems with sepsis. And so that's why appendicitis can be so serious. Nonetheless, without an appendix, your digestive system is going to be compromised, and almost everybody who's had their appendix out will have digestive health conditions, to, digestive health issues, to, uh, subsequent digestive health issues. I'm sure your son or your grandson son does as well. So what you want to do is, number one, you want to start to replace those probiotics, those good bacteria. Get them on the nightly essence. If you'll do fermented food, that would be great. Uh, if you'll do yogurt, make sure it's real yogurt with the bacterial cultures in it. Uh, that can be helpful as well. Uh, apple cider vinegar, if he'll do that, that can be helpful. Or aloe vera, that can be helpful. More fiber. Make him chia pudding uh, with a chia and coconut milk. You could put a little stevia in there or coconut water even. Uh, chia seeds and coconut water slash coconut milk and put a little stevia in there. That'll get him some fiber. You want to work on his digestive system. In addition to, uh, uh, in addition to that, there's lots of nutrients that can be very helpful for kids with ADHD. Uh, one of the most important are the B-complex, particularly thiamine, vitamin B1. In fact, I would just, you can use the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, but I would get him a 100 milligram dose of thiamine every day or a couple hundred milligrams a day, especially after he eats sweets or sugary foods. Likewise, vitamin B3 or niacin. I don't know how much your boy weighs, but it's maybe 100 milligrams of niacin might help. Uh, 50 to 100 milligram dose of niacin can help as well. The whole B complex in general can be helpful. Magnesium is very helpful for folks who have ADHD, kids who have ADHD, and so are essential fatty acids, particularly omega-3 fats. Get them on the ultimate nightly, uh, sorry, the ultimate EFAs. Uh, probably two or three capsules every day. And if you want, you can use a little bit extra, perhaps fish oil uh, or a little bit extra uh, flaxseed oil, both of which have omega threes. I, I would be doing both flax and fish personally. The flax has stuff that the fish doesn't have, and the fish oil has stuff that the flax doesn't have. So treat the ADHD primarily as a gut problem. Certainly, laying off problem foods, uh, especially sugar-rich foods, can be helpful. And then using nutrients that help the body process sugar, as well as nutrients that are important for the brain, especially those omega three fatty acids from both flax and fish. Diana, I want to see if I can get one more call in. I hope that helps. Thank um, you. Any, okay, good. Take care. All right, let's go one more call here, and uh, let's take Carl the Truth Raider. What's going on, Carl the Truth Raider? How you doing, buddy? Uh, good morning, Ben. Uh, it, it's that time. It's, it's midlife crisis. It's like I've done everything 10,000 times before. It is a, it's a situation where you have to do this at 10,000 and first time. Here's 10,001, Carl. Okay, buddy, yeah. listen. Slow down. Slow the body down, slow the mind down. If you can get into a meditation program, that's super helpful. If not, just relax, lighten up. You're, everything I know about you, buddy, you're generating way too much cortisol. You're hyper stress, and this is causing all of the problems that you're talking about the anxiety, the, the insomnia, the health challenges. Slow the body down, relax, cool, cool the body. It's running hyperactive, hypermetabolic. Just slow it down. Slow deep breathing is a great way to do it. Carl, I got to motivate, bro. Call me tomorrow. We'll continue. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Sorry if I left John hold. Call back tomorrow. We'll get you first up. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome, beautiful, wonderful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.